just as Elizabeth said, North Dakota has been the heart of emmer production. Our forefathers, when they came here, um, you know, they brought a lot, they hid a lot of that seed in their socks and they started growing it. It's because of what they knew back at home, the German Russians. And they did well. It was an excellent livestock feed. Part of the collection here that we have at the research center is seed that I collected from farmers as they still had remnant seed on their farm. Particularly a lot of them were from different areas of the country, but like in the areas like Wishick and stuff like that. Actually, McIntosh County has been dubbed way back in the early 1900s by the government when they were doing studies as one of the best places to grow emmer. That is why we have emmer. And as Elizabeth's right, emmer does much better. What I've seen, it's been very uh, viable in, in different weather conditions. It can, can, take, can take dry weather without Affecting without a big, a big yield drag, I guess you would say. As far as the real wet years, uh, other than I've had some lodging issues, it's it's done very well as far as uh, leaf disease and as far as uh, being resistant to scab. ND Common is one of the land races of Emmer. It's been in North Dakota now for more than a hundred years. Vernal emmer has been used in wheat breeding for a very long time. The Value Added Grains Project is including it as one check variety among the other types of emmer that we're looking at. Lucille is an emmer that was released by Montana State University from the USDA collection after several years of trials. This emmer screen includes 117 different accessions from 15 different countries. Besides its marketing appeal, this screen of emmer varieties also shows why emmers have some interest. It's quite vigorous. One of the most exciting parts of the Value Added Grains Project is looking at our new accessions of einkorn, emmer, and spelt that we are increasing and evaluating with hope of releasing some new varieties that farmers in North Dakota and other parts of the country can use. So this season we have 10 varieties of each of those species that looked very well in the initial trial of 60 to 117 different lines. And now we're increasing that more so we can really get a good feel for what sort of yield and maturity and other agronomic traits that these lines will have. Okay, so what, what this sheet is, is it's just, there's just seven lines there you'll see. It's just a basic explanation of where the line is and where it came from. And then we'll just go through ahead and, and look and rate on them as we go. So what we're going to really want to do is probably look at all three emmers and then then come back and talk about each one of these, how we'll do it. Okay? So let's just step down here first. So as you're looking, we're going backwards now. So this number three under the emmer. What kind of feeding rate did you use? This is 100 pounds to 100 pounds on all of them. Everything. But I have never seen the grains mature so fast and so evenly either this year. That mm -hmm. throws it off a little bit. These these emmers normally are spread out and they're all word like that. It's longer and narrower. Mm -hmm. So Yaroslava was long This actually This actually has a, a an einkorn look to it a little bit. Kharkiv is dark. See, this is a starchy one, so this is more like what it's supposed to look like. So this is low nitrogen on that one. Which one's more like it's supposed to look like this? That one, that red. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'd, you'd be... Yeah.